Perfect. All righty. So now that we are dot at nine o'clock, we would like to start the session with you on how to coping through unemployment. This is an extremely um, interesting thing that's happening now in the world. COVID-19, I think all the students have heard it a couple of times. So moving on quick, I would love to introduce you and the lovely speaker that you are. Ms. Amani Garib is an international advisor for the University of British, British Columbia, Canada. She is a result-oriented and customer-centric professional standing at the forefront of innovation and future foresight. Amani holds a bachelor's degree in business administration from Richard IV School of Business Canada and has also completed her master's degree in service leadership and innovation from Rochester Un Institute of Technology, USA. Amani is further pursuing her PhD at Queen's University, Belfast, UK. In her industry experience, Amani has gained cultivating working relationships with stakeholders on an international level, ranging from education field to private nonprofit sectors. We are so glad to have you here with us, Ms. Amani. Over to you. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you very much for, for the introduction and I'm very happy to be with everyone today. Um, uh, thank you for giving me your time. And um, as you mentioned, the topic that I'm covering today is coping through unemployment. Now, um, that is a heavy topic, um, it's, and it's very important before I begin to acknowledge that unemployment is not easy for, for anyone going through it or going through the stages of unemployment. Um, I myself uh, lost my job about a year ago um, due to COVID-19, and I think like everybody else um, and, and many others around the world, that's been the case. Um, so I just think that even with unemployment being so heavy and, and, and so challenging at times, um, it is important that we try and strategize and that we try to orchestrate a new plan for us to ultimately seek employment um, or any sort of um, career advancements. And so, um, I'm just going to go right into the presentation. And when when we talk about unemployment, I know that it feels different at different stages. And so whether you're a high school student looking for a part time job or whether you're a university student graduate that wants to enter the market, but is just having difficulties, especially during this time, um, or whether you're a former employee like myself who lost his or her job and you're looking for um, an employment opportunity. And so while it does feel different at different stages, regardless of where you're at in your life, I think this presentation will help provide you with specific tools um, that you can use to support in your job application journey. Now, first, firstly, and the first tool or the first step that I always like to talk about is to get organized. Um, before talking about CVs or cover letters or, or any of the other wonderful topics, it's really important for us to get organized, not just physically, but mentally as well. And what I mean by that is um, it's important for, for someone to streamline their life. And so to try and improve your life by mastering productivity. And what I mean by that is it's important for us to look at what goals and aspirations that we have. And while we have so many dreams and goals and objectives and, and things of, the, of the such in our minds, sometimes putting it in writing will really help you materialize it later. So um, when I say put your goals and aspirations in writing, obviously I'm speaking to employment related goals and aspirations. Uh, so for example, if you are someone looking to apply for um, digital marketing position, um, and, and that's your ultimate goal to become a digital marketing specialist or manager, uh, depending on where you are in your life, by writing that down and creating schedules for how you will get there and also putting together um, deadlines 
for these goals, it'll really hold your, you will be able to hold yourself accountable and you will also be able to pursue um, these goals one step at a time. And so um, this will automatically help you in improving your overall uh, employment uh, journey. Then the next tool I have is um, updating your CV. Now, um, I know many of us have CVs and we've probably worked them and reworked them so many times. And my advice is to continue to do that. Now, a CV or curriculum vitae is uh, basically, it just means in Latin, it just means um, course of life. So in this case, when you are writing a CV and when you're, when you're putting together a CV, you're actually drafting an overview of your life all on one paper. And so it's important that when we are putting together our CV, that whatever um, items or topic areas that we, we incorporate, th that these are specific to the role that you are applying to or that you are seeking. So again, um, I, I know I mentioned digital marketing earlier, I'll switch it up. Um, accounting, for example, if you're looking for an accounting position, it's important that the keywords and the phrases that you use in your CV are accounting related um, because then that will make you stand out amongst the many other applicants that are applying for the similar roles. Um, the other uh, point I wanted to mention is to include a cover letter in your CV. And a cover letter is basically a letter of introduction. It's a, a letter where you introduce yourself to the employer. Um, the, a lot of, um, a lot of uh, professionals in industry call it a motivation letter, um, where you get to just kind of talk about your feedback, and about your experiences, your expertise, your skills. And I'm just going to show you this sample here. Uh, oop. <laughs> so right here, you're not meant to read this. I just wanted you to have an idea of how a letter, a cover letter would look like. So in the top, you would basically have your name, your address, your contact details. And then you start off by saying, you know, to whom it may concern. I am a graduate of the Richard Ivey School of Business. And then you can talk about your educational backgrounds. Then you can go on to talk about um, the roles that you've done. And now many of you may have never been in the uh, work uh, in the workforce uh, before. You, you may have never worked before. You just, you're a high school student that's looking to enter the market or a university student looking to enter the market. And if that's the case, then you can always talk about the different related courses that you've taken in school. So if you are looking for an accounting role, you can talk about the accounting courses or the accounting subject that you've taken in school, the different projects you've worked on. So there's always something to talk about and don't undermine or underestimate the skills that you've built uh, all along in your, in your different journeys. And so this over here is basically the, how a cover letter um, would look like. And again, um, when you talk about skills in your CV or your cover letter, it, it's, it would be great for you to talk about transferable skills. And when I refer to transferable skills, I mean, um, you know, a skill that you possess that can be uh, used in different roles or different positions. So for example, leadership skills, that's a transferable skill, because if you have leadership skills, that can be applied in so many different industries like in engineering, in healthcare, um, biz in the business world, um, also writing skills, critical thinking, um, uh, time management. Um, so there's so many different transferable skills that you can highlight in your CV and cover letter. Um, the other piece of advice I have is to try and browse online CVs uh, for similar roles. So look at the examples that are out there. It's not wrong to do research and to look at what's out there and look at how different people um, structure a CV. Uh, there is no right or wrong way of writing a CV. 
but there are certain uh, topics and headings that would most probably be required. And so, for example, again, here, you're not meant to be able to read all of this. Again, just me showing you how to structure a CV. Um, you can start off by just like uh, just a sentence or a couple of sentences about your background, about your overall professional profile, talk about the skills and the skill sets that you have. Um, and then again, if you do not have any previous employment experiences, you can talk about projects you've worked on, um, and then education, work history, and so on and so forth. And so those are mainly what one would incorporate into a CV. And once you do that, um, have multiple people read it over. You can have a teacher look it over, a professor, a friend, a spouse. Um, but for me, for example, I've been in the workforce for more than 15 years now, and I've applied to so many different positions in the past few years. And I've also um, different roles in different industries. And while I had multiple people look over my CV, I still continue to do so. So it was just, I guess, just a couple of months ago, I had someone look over my CV. Um, I, it's just, it's always good to keep it updated. And the reason why is because with my new role, I've just updated my CV, um, at incorporating that in there. And so it's always good to keep it fresh and keep it um, um, up to date always. The next important tool that I wanted to highlight is networking. And um, networking is really interesting because uh, there are, it, it can be something that uh, someone dreads. Um, sometimes if you feel like you're a little bit more introverted, it may be stressful, um, but it's really important to network and to connect with different people. And when I, um, talk about networking, what I mean is, so a network is basically um, a group of people that you are interconnected to. So for example, your friends are part of your network, your family, your relatives are part of your network. Um, but what's important is you need to try and expand that network through networking. And so this is a way to um, cultivate quality relationships that will help you uh, transition into the workforce. And so um, what you can do is you can take advantage of the different contacts that you have when you are looking for employment. Um, what I did, again, I, I mentioned I was out of work for about eight months last year because of um, me losing my job. And that's a whole other story. Maybe if we have enough time at the end, I can go a little bit into more detail. But it took eight months for me to find employment. Sometimes for people, it may take less time. It may take more time. But ultimately, what one of the things that I did was I looked through all the different people that I knew in Dubai, and I categorized where each of them work and then I went and looked at their company websites or organization websites to see if they are hiring. And if they were hiring, I contacted that person and I said, hey, I heard or I saw that your organization is hiring for one, two, three position or ABC position. Um, is it possible if you can recommend me or refer me or is there something I need to know? It depends on the kind of relationship that you've already built and cultivated with that person. But that's a very powerful tool that you can use to your advantage, which is your network. Um, and then you can join agencies, you can create profiles on agency websites. So for example, um, when, I, when I talk about agencies, um, what I mean is recruitment agencies. So there are a lot of recruitment agencies out there that work with employers in supporting them in recruitment processes and talent acquisition. And so what happens is these recruiters have um, a database of all these profiles and they go through their databases for specific roles 
and that align with the employer. And then they'll contact the, the individuals that have profiles that align with what the employer's needs. And then they will interview you and support you in the entire interview process. And so um, some recruitment agencies that I can list out, there are hundreds and hundreds thousands actually even more um, of agencies out there um, but for example there's like charter house labor solutions michael page manpower and the list goes on and on so what you can do is you can go onto these recruitment agency websites and you can create a profile upload your cv upload your cover letter um, your information, what type of roles are you looking for, what salary ranges are you looking for, and then ultimately that will help you um, and help them in connecting you with roles that are related to your qualifications, credentials, and um, requirements. The other thing, the other way to network is to attend conferences and events. Now, while a lot of events are now held, being held virtually, like this one, um, it, you can also build your connections through this. I mean, for example, here, I'm I'm here speaking to you today. Um, Karishni is also with us today. Um, and while you are not on video and um, you are not um, able to speak at the moment, what you can always do is after the, the conference, you can always send an email or send a line to Karishni or to myself or to any of the other speakers and say, hey, I just wanted to let you know that I attended this event where you spoke at and I was really interested in one, two, three topics um, that you brought up and um, I'm, I'm happy to be connected with you. Like something as simple as an email like this to a presenter or to a group of people that presented would really go a long way because then you can take that a step further and you can add these people to your LinkedIn um, if you have a LinkedIn uh, platform account um, and so on and so forth. So again, um, even if you're not a speaker at an event, you can still build your connections and you can still build your network. Um, and I talked about being introverted. Um, believe it or not, I myself, um, struggle with networking settings. Um, I've attended many conferences and events where you know you, you you have breakout sessions and you're expected to go and speak to people and I get really nervous and and that's okay. Um, it's okay to do that, but you also don't want your nerves to show and you want to try to overcome that. And so what I do, for example, is I'll prepare questions in advance. And I'll prepare discussion points in advance in my mind so that when I'm in these settings, I can actually bring them up without showing that I'm nervous and without showing that, oh, I, I'm really, I have no idea what to talk about right now. Um, and so it, it would be, it's it's a tool that I've always used and it's always worked. So for example, something if um, um, I, you attend a business network lunch, um, you know, one question that I would prepare in advance would be something along the lines of, oh, like, tell me, tell me about, um, are you currently running a business? Uh, tell me more about your business. And I mean, it's such a simple question, but sometimes when, you, when you're in these settings, you're so nervous that you don't, you, you can't come up with anything. So sometimes thinking through this in advance would really help. Um, and then lastly, LinkedIn. Um, I love LinkedIn. It's such a great professional tool um, and platform for you to use regardless of which stage you're at, whether you're a high school student, university student, or um, a professional in the workforce. LinkedIn has so many opportunities for you to connect, to network, to connect with people, to, to find mentors, to um, just so many different ways that you can use that platform. I feel like if I delve into LinkedIn, it needs like a whole other hour to just talk about the, the great things about LinkedIn. But that's one way you can also build your um, network. And then the next tool that I wanted to talk about is professional development. And while we're always developing in our lives, um, regardless of uh, what we're doing, whether you are pursuing sports, um, sport activities where maybe you go to soccer, 
um, or football uh, training weekly, that's you developing. Um, when you go to school and you're learning, that's you developing. Um, but when we talk about professional development, um, that can be both formal or informal. As I mentioned, it could be a sporting activity or it could be something that's like more academic focused. Um, but basically what it is, it is a way for you to um, learn and earn credentials, certifications, licensing or licenses. Um, basically it's a way for you to build and develop your new skills. And so um, when I talk about professional development, again, regardless of which stage you're at, you can always continuously develop. I'm still developing. I'm still looking for courses that will help me in my roles and in my positions that I'm embarking on in this like right now. Um, so for, this will really help you sharpen your skills and it will also be a great addition to your CV. So when you take on specific professional development courses, that's something you can incorporate and add to your CV, something more recent. So in my case, I was out of work for about eight months. I needed to show what was I doing in those eight months. Um, it's a big gap. For some people, it could be many years, um, like many gap years, um, depending on whether someone decided to just exit the workforce for a few years and take a break or um, handle family commitments. Um, and if that's the case and you want to re-enter, um, you need to talk about what were you doing to develop yourself on a professional level. And, and, and this will ultimately expand your career options. So for example, um, one, I'm just gonna share two platforms with you, but there are again, so many different ways you can develop professionally. Um, uh, one, one of the platforms I wanted to share is Coursera, which is a tool, it's a platform that offers so many different education related um, topics and courses that come from different institutions and different universities and colleges and, and whatnot. And so what you can do is you can take different courses depending on your um, area, um, area that, that you're looking to tap into depending on your um, industry. So for example, if you're looking for a marketing uh, position uh, or marketing related position, taking courses related to marketing would be really, really useful and helpful. Um, there's also LinkedIn Learning, um, which is again through LinkedIn. It's it's a platform that gives you access to so many courses that you can take and certifications. Um, and what's great about LinkedIn is they do offer a free one month trial because some courses you have to pay for. And I completely get that when someone is unemployed, the last thing they want to do is pay more money. Um, and, and, and add more to their expenditure. But keep in mind that this, I wouldn't look at this as an expense, I would look at it as an investment. Because any time that you are professionally developing and that you are growing and learning, that's you investing in yourself. Um, but again, I do understand that financial implications will exist. I don't even want to say may exist, but will exist when someone is unemployed. And if that's the case, there are free courses out there that you can sign up for. And for example, like LinkedIn Learning, I know they offer a free one month trial that you can tap into. Coursera also offers some free courses as well. And there are many other platforms out there too. Um, there's also different university related uh, professional development courses that you can take, um, like, for example, at University of British Columbia, we have the advanced leadership uh, online training program in Harvard University, there's a leadership principles uh, online course that you can take. Um, University of Colorado, there's like effective communication and writing design um, online courses that you can take as well. And I mean, I just listed three for you, but there are thousands, maybe even millions out of courses out there that you can uh, take part in. Um, and the reason why I mentioned like leadership, advanced leadership, communication, writing is because again, if we go back to our transferable skills, these are transferable certifications or licenses or like courses that you can actually apply in so many different roles. 
Um, and then finally, the last um, tool or the last tip that I have for you um, when you're going through unemployment is volunteering. And volunteering is basically giving yourself um, in service uh, to a cause by, by freely just giving yourself or giving your time. So you're either helping out an organization, you're helping out a community, an individual. Um, basically, that's what volunteering is. And so um, my recommendation is to always volunteer in an area that's related to your field. Because ultimately what you're doing is you're building a network in your field, even if you're volunteering and you're doing uh, work for free, basically. But what you're doing is you're building a network in your field. You're also gaining experience in your field. Um, and this can all, again, be incorporated into your CV. And so um, there are so many different places that you can volunteer in Dubai, um, in the UAE as a whole, actually, and anywhere around the world. Um, but it, you can just literally, it be such a, it would, be, it would just be like a Google search, um, volunteering opportunities in Dubai, for example. But I've listed a few for you here um, that you can possibly tap into. There's the Dubai Volunteering Center, the UAE Red Crescent, Habitat for Humanity, um, Hamad bin Rashid Global Initiatives, Make-A-Wish, UAE Smart Life Foundation, UAE Dolphin Project, and the list goes on and on and on. So um, this is a great way for you to also keep yourself busy because sometimes when someone is unemployed, it's really um, draining to be sending resumes like 100 resumes or CVs out every week. Sorry, I say resumes because in Canada, we call it resumes. Um, in the UAE, it's called um, a CV. But um, basically, I know it's dreadful and it's hard when you're just consistently submitting job applications, but you're not hearing back. And I think it's really important to note that when you're submitting job applications, you're not the only one. So when you apply for a job, there are hundreds, potentially thousands of others who are applying for the same job. So how are you going to make yourself stand out? And like I said, the different ways that you can do that is by taking your application a step further, by connecting with someone in that company, someone who can refer you, someone who can recommend you, um, by uh, volunteering with that organization or that company because they know who, who you are, they know your work ethic, and so it'll be a lot easier for you to transition from a volunteering opportunity or even an internship into um, into employment. And so again, uh, it's, not, it's not an easy journey and it's not an easy process, but the most important thing is to put yourself out there. And um, I know I've taken you through some steps that you can kind of take into account. Um, and just to kind of reiterate those steps, the first thing would be to get organized, um, the second would be to update your CV, keep it updated, um, incorporate a cover letter or a motivation letter to your job applications, um, network, 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 try and meet new people, connect with new people, um, take courses or uh, certification programs to sharpen your skills, um, to professionally develop, and finally, try and volunteer um, and help out. In, in areas that are related to your field. And lastly, and last but not least, uh, stay positive. Um, we are in unprecedented times right now with COVID-19, and I know we all just want to put it behind us and move, move forward, but it's the reality that we're living in and we need to stay positive and try and work with what we have um, and try to build what we can um, and, and pursue a career the right way. Um, because sitting at home and submitting hundreds of applications behind a computer 
on a desk is not going to open as many doors for us as would networking, professional development. And even by the way, when you're professionally developing and when you're taking courses, you're interacting with classmates, you're interacting with teachers, with professors, um, with educators. And so that's also a great way to build your connection as well. Um, and that's how I ultimately got the job that I'm doing right now. It was through connections and it was through a recruitment agency um, by me just reaching out to people and saying, hey, um, I'm currently looking for work here. Here's my CV. Here's what I'm looking for. Is there anything that you can do to help? Um, and actually, um, the, the way it worked with me is I had a friend who was approached by a recruiter um, for a specific role. And she said, no, I'm not interested, but I actually know someone who is. She shared her CV with me last week. Let me forward it. Uh, to you. And then the recruiter contacted me. So again, don't underestimate your contacts, connections, whether it's friends, family, um, or professional networks, and stay positive and good luck. Um, and we're all in this journey together. We've all experienced unemployment at one point of our lives. Um, and just know that there will, there will always be light at the end of the tunnel. Um, so thank you for your time. I really hope this was helpful. Um, and I guess we'll just open it up to um, for questions. Excellent. This was such a lovely session. I needed to hear so many words that came out of your mouth today. It was exceptional. It's so important to be positive. Uh, as you said, yes, even I have experienced unemployment exactly when COVID-19 started. So I know exactly what you're talking about. Um, as for the questions, we would like to open the floor for questions. You can either unmute yourself and ask them if you like to, or else you can just post it in the chat box. There, we have a question for you. Um, sorry, did someone ask a question? I, I wasn't sure. Uh, yeah, no, it's in the chat box. For the opportunities that you listed, do you know if there is a certain age you have to be? Okay, so again, um, I mean, if you can elaborate more on the question, I'll be able to give a better answer for you. But I think when we talk about age, generally speaking, um, there is no um, there is no limitation when it comes to age. Obviously, I think the most important aspect of applying for a job or applying for a role would be more so your qualifications, your credentials, your experience, more than age. Um, if you are a high school student and you're looking to apply for a job, I think it's important that um, we're also being realistic in the jobs that we're applying to. So for example, if you're, uh, if you've just graduated from high school or even university, it might be um, a little bit um, uh, too far of a jump to apply for a management position or for, uh, you know, uh, a, a, a executive position. I think it's important in that case to apply for something that's more entry level. And so when we talk about age, um, I think I would like to change the rhetoric a little uh, by saying it's not so much age, but rather um, your qualifications, credentials, experiences, and how that aligns with the job that you're looking for. I hope that answers your question. But if you want to elaborate, please do so. Oh, you're on mute, Karishni. <laughs> um, we have another question as well. What jobs can high school students apply for? All right. So, um, I guess it really depends on what you're looking for and where you are. Like, I know when I was in Canada, I applied for customer service related 
roles. Um, I applied for administrative related roles. So for example, I did uh, telemarketing um, back when telemarketing was prevalent over the phone where you call companies and call people and try to sell certain products. Um, there are different opportunities that, that high school students can apply for. It could be more so customer service. I would say, or administrative, administrative related. And by administrative, I mean like front desk help, um, uh, supporting uh, in uh, just, just generally customer service, I think, or administration. But also look at the different opportunities that are out there. I mean, you can support in um, athletic um, institutions, if, for example, if you are um, an avid like soccer player or a swimmer, um, look at the different um, institutions or the different organizations that offer those and you can do coaching, you can do refing, things along those lines as well. Do we have any other questions, guys? Oh, lovely. Uh, for your CV, do you have anybody, uh, any suggestions that we should definitely add in? Um, so suggestion number one, make sure your CV is related to the job that you're applying for. Um, sometimes what I've seen is um, a lot of um, individuals usually use the same CV and they just submit it to so many different jobs in universities and companies. I've also seen in the past, because um, when I was in Canada, um, I worked for a government um, institution in supporting um, individuals like with their career job search and career applications and whatnot. And you'd be surprised to, to like to know and to hear about how many cases came up where someone would, for example, apply to IBM, but then in their CV, it would say, I'm really looking forward or I'm really interested in working for um, Deloitte. Um, Deloitte is one, two, three, because they've forgotten to um, change the names or the names of the companies and whatnot. So I guess number one suggestion, target your CV to the company you're applying for. But if you are going to target, make sure you're changing, you know exactly where you've listed out the name of the company that you're interested in so that you can ultimately change that when you're applying for other roles. Um, I would highlight your skills. Uh, so for example, things like leadership skills, uh, critical thinking skills, communication skills, decision making, um, uh, what else, multitasking, presentation, if you are um, if you are comfortable with certain computer programs or software programs, you can list that on there as well, like ability to operate Microsoft Office Suite, ability to design um, elements through uh, Photoshop, Illustrator, and, and things like that. So that would be another suggestion to highlight your skills. And then if you've worked on really big projects, um, in school or in university uh, to talk about those as well. I've recently done a project in my master's degree program, and that was just a few years ago. It wasn't too long ago. And I included that into my cover letter. Um, and I also included that in my CV because it was such, um, such a big project that had so much substance to it. And I knew that that would, that would be found um, attractive for employers when they read what it is that I worked on and what the outcome was. So if you have projects as such, I would incorporate those as well. So uh, we talked about that. And then your employment experiences, volunteering experiences, things like that, I would incorporate those too. Any other questions? Oh, wow. Sorry, I'm seeing the chat box just now. Yeah. Sorry, I had to um, unshare uh, my screen to do that. Okay. Um, I think questions? Yeah, we've um, uh, answered all the questions that were asked, I think. Uh, just in case anyone has any other questions, you can definitely put it down in the chat box as this is 
a live webinar. And if you aren't able to engage as of now, I can definitely push on the questions to Ms. Amani. And if you provide me your email address with it, I can get back to you. All right, I think uh, we are approaching the end of the session today. I hope everyone had a lovely time. And thank you so much, Ms. Amani. This has been a wonderful session and I cannot thank you enough. Thank you thank for you. your time and we shall see you soon. Thank you very much. And thanks to all of you that have joined. Um, what I'll do as well, I, I know Karishni has my contact details, uh, but I'll also include it in, in the chat box as well. So feel free to send me an email if you have any questions. And Best of luck to you in any endeavor you decide to, to embark on. And um, if there's any way that I can help or support, I'd be more than happy if, if you connect with me through LinkedIn or also um, through email as well. All right. Thanks a lot. Have a great day, everyone. Thank you so much, Ms. Imani. Have a lovely day. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye-bye.